Hello everyone and welcome to this, a video requested by 173 of you um, that comment currently stands at. And not being the sort to want to disappoint the viewers, I decided to carry out said request. And so today we're going to be landing a base inside the Mohole, which is a hole on the Moho. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Moho is the analogue of Mercury in Kerbal Space Program. It has a really low orbit around the Sun, and it's at this big angle as well. So that's why we're taking this kind of strange trajectory. Normally we'd head directly east, um, directly sort of 90 degrees on the nav ball. But in order to save fuel, we're going to be uh, launching ourselves into an orbit that's already at the right inclination, or, you know, near enough. So we don't need to do any expensive inclination changes when we're actually in space. But yes, just going back to the Mohol, it's actually quite interesting. Uh, it's located at the pole of Moho, and according to the KSP wiki, it's 4.6 kilometers deep, which is pretty deep. It was caused by a terrain glitch, though it now seems to be an official part of the game, and, you know, I think it's kind of accepted that it's not going anywhere now, which is great, because it means that we can do this mission. Its actual shape is very sort of cone-like and gets very, very, very narrow towards the bottom, which is where I want this sort of base to be, which is why um, this, this, you can see it now, but the craft has a very small footprint, so it can easily fit down there, and it's designed to be a sort of single cylinder containing the, IR, the ISRU, observatories, laboratories, crew habitation, and science modules. It'll be suspended just above the base of the Mohol using some large metal poles, you can we're on the map screen at the moment, but you can see that incl inclined door which is there. You can see sort of those big metal poles coming off the ends of the front of the ship. We'll reconfigure those to be jutting out of the sides, and it's going to be those four poles that are going to be uh, suspending our base uh, at the bottom of the mohol. If you like playing with mods, and I'd probably recommend using something like Infernal Robotics to use those metal arms, but since I like playing stock so people can easily recreate these missions without the need for mods. Uh, we're going to be using uh, decouplers, uh, not decouplers, docking ports. You may have just seen there, we were just deorbiting the orbital insertion booster just there. Uh, yes, like I say, it's, it, it would be ideal to use something like Infernal Robotics or some other equivalent mod, but since I like playing stock, we're going to be using docking ports, which are, are far less practical and a rather, you know, not a good solution, but eh. It's fine, it'll work. <laughs> and I couldn't be bothered to install mods and learn how Infernal Robotics works. So there's that. And there's also that argument that I said earlier where I like the fact that people don't have to worry about downloading specific part packs to make my ships work and things like that. So there's a crap file in the description, it'll work on your game. Anyway, here we are, deal decoupling. I'm not going to show all of them in painful, excruciating order, but we'll just show the first one. Uh, we can just reconfigure it. So you can see we've got monopropellant boosters and monopropellant tanks on all um, on each end, so we can easily control it. We've got a little probe core tucked away in there as well, and an RCS wheel, so we have lots of maneuverability. And you can see at the very end we've got a drill there as well, so that can extend into the Moho rock itself. And it can then supply the IRSU with uh, ore, which, you know, can then be refined into stuff. I mean, this is purely from a visual standpoint, really, because this thing doesn't have any engines on it, so we're not going to really get anything useful from doing that, but it's kind of a nice thing to just roleplay getting surface samples from the edges of the mohole. Anyway, here we are. I'll just show all three uh, of the remaining things getting attached, because you don't need to see all of them when it's basically the same thing every time. But yes, we can just fade away into our first burn. So we're going to be performing this manoeuvre over two burns just because the thrust to weight ratio of the nuclear engines is so, is so bad it wouldn't be practical to do one burn. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to burn to the point where our apoapsis is just at the very edge of Kerbin's sphere of influence and then we're going to do a second burn to actually kick us all the way to Moho. You may have seen there we've got quite an interesting nuclear engine configuration. You'll notice it when we're back on the map screen again but we have the little cluster of nuclear engines at the end and I've kind of constructed a little cage around them using fuel tanks it's completely unnecessary but you know it looks kind of cool and I wanted to make a moho rocket that doesn't dump a bunch of tanks just in deep space you can see in there you might want to notice that sort of ring of very very small tanks around the base of the base itself that was a weird sentence. That was just to make keep the fairing nice and narrow. I could have used the fatter Mark 1 ones, but then the fairing would have been a bit more bulky. Those ones just, just fit inside the fairing when we were launching, so that's why I went with those. Anyway, you can see there on the maneuver node, we have about 1900 meters per second of delta V for this burn. So it's going to be quite a lengthy uh, maneuver but it's not going to be a problem. We have quite a high uh, periapsis still. We do enter the atmosphere very, very briefly, but we're talking sort of above 66,000 metres, so 
it's not going to have any really significant effect on our uh, velocity and we are just finishing off the maneuver node now so we're going to have to do another maneuver node once we're in uh, deep space just so we can set up our final encounter with Moho and get our inclination corrected because unfortunately whilst we did have that inclined orbit around Kerbin it wasn't quite enough to get our inclination to be the same as Moho so we're going to do around 300 meters per second of burning just to get our inclination uh, right on uh, Moho so when you go into Moho don't, re don't really worry about transfer windows, I find. I think it's much easier just to get your periapsis to be perfectly lined up and intersecting Moho's orbit and then making a maneuver node and just dragging out the encounter from there. You'll see what I mean when we actually do it. This is how it's a similar way of how you get an encounter with Gili as well. Just because Moho's sphere of influence is just so small, it's very difficult to just get an encounter with it. But I mean, we can do a few correction burns just then, but I think that's pretty good what we've got here. So we're going to make a maneuver node here where we intersect Moho's orbit. I'm just going to drag out the retrograde marker and as you can see that node just comes around and we don't quite have a perfect Moho encounter, but they got pretty close. So I think rather than just play around with the stock maneuver nodes, which can be a bit tricky at the best of times, we'll just do that burn there and then we'll do a very, very low power burn just to get our actual final Moho encounter all set up. So this was a fairly expensive burn just here. There were probably more efficient ways of doing this mission. A big one would have been getting a gravity assist using EVE, but I couldn't really be bothered to do that. And this way works fairly well. <laughs> okay, so we can add another maneuver node here just to set up ourselves so we'll be on our final MOHO approach because our target uh, position is very, very close. And there we are, not very much effort at all needed to get our moho encounter all set up so we can just you don't have to watch me f faff around with it getting the best encounter possible but you know we'll just do some burns there so we can actually do a little bit further tweaking here by creating a maneuver node just to see which way you need to burn it's like very very small though four meters per second so what i actually did here was just burn using the uh, rcs thrusters so you just use h and n for forwards and backwards and then just use uh, i j k and l like you would wasd to get the other maneuver, the other sort of movement. And then other than that, we can just time warp ourselves. So we're uh, encountering Moho. Now, usually Moho requires very, very long burns to get circularized. And this is no exception, but it's not too bad uh, compared to a lot of people's first or second Moho missions. So we're gonna just, you know, use uh, auto SAS to hold ourselves on our maneuver node. And we're actually just gonna drain off all our mono propellant because I thought it'd be a good idea just to try and shed as much weight as possible when it comes to actually docking into, well not docking into, but landing inside the Moho. And there's the last of our nuclear stage exhausted, so we can jettison it and use the vector engine. I used the vector engine because I wanted something powerful, so we could, it would be a bit more forgiving when it came to the rather difficult manoeuvring of actually getting ourselves inside the Moho. Uh, and we have lots of delta v in this final stage so we can be fairly liberal with our burns but here we go circularizing there and we can just create another maneuver node now just to make sure we're all lined up with the mohole itself so you can kind of see it it's a sort of small speck on the map this is one of the more forgiving easter eggs it's very easy to just be able to see without needing to use comsats or anything so we can deploy some of uh, detach some of those external tanks there and just pump some of the fuel tanks i used as structural parts from the base itself into the vector engine stage tanks just so we have a bit more fuel to play around with and there we go detached and well now we're all on a crash course we can just set ourselves up to perform the final act of this mission that is of course to perform our retrograde burn and land inside the mohole itself which of course is very very exciting so you can see it there looming below us so we can begin our descent and fire up the engine. Now at this point I'm just cutting the footage to black because I want you to see what happened next. The Kraken got me. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine.
After trying for about an hour, I nearly did it. But then, no. The Kraken got me again. <laughs> and just random explosion because screw you, I suppose. This went on for a while. Um, it was rather disheartening that this glitch still happens, but, you know, whatever. I guess it's part of the game at this point. But, yeah, I mean, this was how the video was going to be wrapped up. We're watching this ascent here now. It's not the most graceful of descents, but, you know, it's fine. So we've got a little bit of glitching there. That mod you can see is the time control mod. It doesn't add parts or anything. What it lets me do is pause the game, because what I was doing was uh, reactivating and deacting or deactivating auto strut, which is what a lot of you, I'm sure, will realise what this cracking is being caused by. But, I mean, if it's built into the game, you should just be able to use it without having to worry about auto strut. And the reason the base um, is designed this way is because I actually tested it before filming this video. That's why some of the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed another vector at the bottom of the mohole. That was just from one of my test vessels that I forgot to uh, destroy, so... That's why there's kind of two vectors down there, even though there's only one vector in this craft. Anyway, we kind of skidded and slided and just kept pausing and unpausing to redock and dock the arms on as and when needed. Just try help just so there we go to dock, uh, undock the first one. I decided rather than just have the base standing proud, we just let it dangle uh, from just two of the arms. Because, quite frankly, I'd spent a long time and I realised that this is just a glitch that, you know, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. And, you know, this is this is good enough. We're in the mohole. All the essential equipment has survived. We lost one of the commsats, but, I mean, and things are pointing downwards. But we don't need to worry about solar panels because this, th this thing is powered by RTGs because you don't get much sunlight down here. So, I mean, we're pretty good. I mean, all the modules are upside down, but it's fine. Everything's fine. We can even go on an EVA um, and just, you know, get samples and stuff, I suppose. It's fine. This is all fine. Cause you had a bad day. You take it one down. You save the sa But then I came back the next day and thought, you know what? No. This channel is better than that. We start a mission. We finish the mission. So here we are. You may have noticed the quality of the recording has just dropped a little bit. That's because I was worried there was so much Fraps footage. For those of you who don't know, Fraps uses an insane amount of storage space. Um, so what I'm using here is NVIDIA Shadow Play, which uses a lower quality, but it means the file sizes are manageable. Uh, so yeah, you can use my very liberal use of the quick, quick save there. Um, so I'm just going to show this. I want to show this thing in its uncut entirety, just to show you... If you want to, God have mercy on your soul if you wanted to recreate this mission. Just reloaded that quick save <laughs> that you just saw me create because we uh, exploded. So we're just controlling our descent. We don't have that much delta V to play with actually. We only have 251 meters per second. So considering the amount of fine tuning we'll have to do, it's not a lot. So we achieved almost hover there. So we're just controlling our descent. Quick save there. And then we, when then we reloaded that quick save because I died again. But we're nearly at the bottom now, so I'm just using the auto SES to hold retrograde. Very gently coming down. Those arms can withstand, there's absolutely no auto strut on this thing, by the way, if you're trying to re regrade this. That's why it's so wobbly now. But hopefully the flex will just actually help to absorb some of the impact. So make another quick save there that we then quick loaded because I crashed. But here we go bouncing down. If you want to watch a little montage of all the attempts I made, well not all in all of the attempts, just a lot of the attempts that I made whilst trying to do this mission, there's a link in the description and it's on my second channel. Just a little montage I made. The song that plays is a song by Bare Naked Ladies and their album, Bare Naked Ladies uh, Greatest Pits, I don't know what the actual album is called. That pulled me through, the mo that gave me the motivation to carry on, so thank you Bare Naked Ladies. And that's it, we are now landed, we can make another quick save. And look at that. It's all gone perfectly. So you can do the obligatory cinematic zoom down into the mohole. You can get a sense of just how deep this thing is. And nothing else can possibly go wrong now. Well, you know, the Kraken wasn't going to go down without a fight. It was just those two drills, I think, must have just been clipping into the surface. Because those lower arms are taking all the weight. But luckily the upper two survived. So we can aim the camera towards them to give you a better view, and then we can deploy them and harvest ourselves some ore. And of course, there is insufficient resources. Well, 
I mean, I knew I was never going to be able to get anything useful out of these anyway, so I wasn't really too worried about having actual practical uses for those drills. It's more just uh, to demonstrate it. And there's a little shot with kind of inside the terrain there. But you can see this thing is nice and suspended. It's all the right way up, kind of. It's at that weird angle, but, you know, at least the satellite dishes, the, the not satellite dishes, communication dishes are facing up. I'm just destroying some of the debris at the bottom just so we can get a Kerbal down there to plant a flag. In my defense, a lot of that is from the test vessels I made. In fact, all of it, apart from the vector engine, is from the test vessels. So, you know, yeah, we've done the mission now. Planting the flag is just kind of, you know the final send-off really so we can drop our kerbal down uh very fast <laughs> gravity can be a little bit glitchy down here and other than that i guess thank you for watching like i say on screen at the very end of this video there'll be some links to various different things uh, including the crash montage crash montage get our science you know do all that sort of spaz our kerbal up and then other than that we can get our flag planted